Do you know what each of the different colored butterflies are for? Or did you know that you can get enemies to fight each other? How about the fact that you can unlock the ability to respec not only your level, but also your P-Organ and your Legion Arm too? In this video, I shall reveal all of this and so much more as I go through my 14 top tips to help you take on Lies of P. So grab a notepad and some snacks as we go straight into tip one, how to get unlimited fable. The more you'll realize tools like your fable arts and your legion arm are completely invaluable and you can't just rely on using your regular attacks to get through, especially when it comes to some of the tougher bosses or even mini bosses. And you'll find that using your powerful fable arts to very quickly stagger enemies becomes absolutely critical. However, Fable recharges very slowly, and early game when you need every bit of ergo that you can get, constantly buying the Fable refills doesn't really cut the mustard. However, there is a way to completely and instantaneously replenish your Fable bar for free, and it is as simple as teleporting back to the Stargazer at Hotel Croft and walking out into the training area. For the purposes of training, it completely replenishes your bar for you, and it doesn't go back to default when you leave. So you can very quickly and easily do this after every tough area that you complete, effectively saving you so much money and making sure your super powerful Fable attacks are always ready to use. Next up is a very specific combat tip that will help you out in so many situations. Just like with many Souls likes, Quite a few enemies can't really deal with you just permanently strafing around them. There's a couple of fantastic examples that you're seeing right now, but trust me, like 85 to 90% of enemies just cannot deal with you strafing around them. The occasional attack might catch you, yes, of course, but this is going to save you so many heals and see you through the particularly long and dangerous areas of the late game. As you see during the White Lady boss fight here, I have zero heals and she can be quite a terrifying enemy. However, I am doing almost the entire battle without getting hit once because she simply cannot understand how to deal with me just holding right. Strafing in Souls Likes has always felt a little bit like cheating and in Lies of P you can take that one step further. It feels downright broken against certain enemies. So every time you encounter a new enemy, just hold down left or right, whichever is your preferred direction, and see which of their many attacks you can dodge with zero effort whatsoever. Tip number three is something I'm sure will be a huge relief for many people to hear, and that is the fact that respecking is in this game. You don't unlock it until later on in the game, and it is technically missable, and I would like to keep this as spoiler-free as possible, so all I'll let you know is that you can access it once you get to the Grand Exhibition Hall, and you do need a key. It is missable. However, when you get to this room, as you can see, you will be able to reset your P-Organ, your level, and your Legion Arm. They all require a currency that you may not have encountered yet, the gold coin fruit. And you do need quite a lot of it, so it's not something you can do willy-nilly, but you can do it quite frequently. And this will really help if you have completely butchered your build. And I'm sure it's a huge relief for many people to hear, because it means you don't have to completely restart the game again every single time you decide you no longer like your build. I am of course specifically talking to those of us among us who are altaholics just like myself and love many different characters and many different builds. Tip number four is that enemies can and will fight each other. There are a surprising amount of examples of this actually and if you're lucky you can even get one of the first bosses in the game, the Mad Donkey, to fight the police puppets just outside of his boss arena. Long story short, there are three different types of enemies in this game, human, puppet, and carcass. And if one of these types of enemies comes in contact with another, you are now priority number two, and they will fight each other first instead. So as you can see here, this horribly terrifying dual-wielding berserker puppet, who would absolutely wreck me if I was fighting him by myself, 
I have been able to pull these three carcass enemies into the fray and they are now helping me take him out. And the later on in the game you get, the more you will see different enemy types are mixed together in very close proximity. So you can use this tip to your advantage more and more as you start to progress through the game. And trust me, you really want to because it makes seemingly impossible areas so much easier. And on the topic of evening the scales and trying to tackle some of the really tough elite enemies in this game, do not feel at all bad just running straight past something that is giving you a bit of trouble, beelining through the next few areas until you can find a shortcut or a new stargazer or some kind of checkpoint to unlock because there are usually tools up ahead or at least a door or something that you can open so that you can recoup and heal up and then go back the way you just went and get the drop on them. This footage here is just one example of the many times in the game that this method can be used. Obviously you want to make sure you are literally exploring every single area so thoroughly because there are lots of very key, very missable items. But as I say, sprint past, unlock that shortcut first, then come back and tackle the area. For tip number six, what I recommend you do every time you encounter a new boss is don't worry about dying for your first few attempts. Don't use any consumables, don't use anything that you could waste, except that you will die and just use this time to learn the boss. The reason this advice is so specific to Lies of P, and I would not recommend this for other Souls likes, is because when you die, there is literally no negative, because your ergo is outside of the boss arena. The only thing you could possibly lose by using this method is if you are wasting consumables. If we compare to Elden Ring, for example, when you tackle a boss, if you die, you have lost your rune arc if you had a rune arc. You have lost your consumables if you used any consumables. And of course, most importantly, your runes are now stuck in that boss arena until you go back and get them again. Whereas even though some of the bosses in Lies of P can be extremely challenging, at least there is no downside to trying again and again as long as you aren't wasting your own resources. Talking of bosses, if you are still in the early game, I'm talking the first five hours or so, you will probably have started collecting rare ergo, aka boss gems. It does hint that you can do something with them, but it takes so long before you do unlock the ability to do something with them that you start to doubt yourself and will probably end up using it for the little ergo boost. Please fight that urge and hold on to all of your rare ergo. Once you have progressed far enough through the game and you get to the bottom of the St. Frangelico Cathedral, there is a side room down here where you will encounter Alidoro. And Alidoro is who you need to trade in your boss souls and get some of the most ridiculously powerful weapons and amulets in the game. So go seek him out as soon as you can and try out some of the new awesome weapons that will now be available to you. This next tip is specifically aimed at people later on in the game who are now easily racking up 5 to 10,000 ergo. And this tip is to buy lots of the items that replenish your Fable and Legion. I like to have around 10 of each at any one time so that when I'm going through a particularly challenging area, I'm able to just keep churning out Legion arm attacks and churning out Fable Arts, knowing that the next time I rest at a Stargazer, that stock will be replenished. You may think this is a bit counterintuitive compared to some of the other tips that I've given you, but later on in the game, as you see here, I'm not even level 50 yet, and it's costing me over 7,000 ergo just to level up twice. And for that amount of money, I could have got 10 to 15 of each of these two items, which will help me out in countless very tough engagements. So don't go overkill. Of course, you want to still level up your character, but bear in mind that you always want to keep a stock of these items by your side because they will help in very critical situations. Tip number nine is just a reminder to use your cranks to customize your weapons and make them more effective. These cranks are effectively going to help tailor any weapon in the game to the build that you are currently aiming for. Sometimes it can be hard to force a weapon into your build. Weapons that are purely motivity are a complete write-off if you're going for technique or advance. 
However, especially with boss weapons, using cranks can give you that edge that you need, especially in the later game. Being able to get a weapon to an A or even an S scaling in the stat that you are focusing on can give you a significant damage boost in the late game. So save up your cranks because they are quite rare and they are quite expensive, but at the same time, don't forget to use them because they are invaluable for maximizing your damage output. And as we're talking about things you don't want to forget to use, Quartz is the next thing on that list. Leveling your P organ with Quartz and unlocking the next phase is so much more powerful and so much more important than just leveling up your character. So before every boss fight you encounter, go back and check and make sure you have definitely used all your Quartz. There are some ridiculously powerful abilities, especially early on. One that I think is an absolute must is being able to use your recovery roll when you're knocked down. I do personally think this is something that should have just been built into the game and we aren't forced to spend money on because you can very easily be stun locked to death once you have been knocked over. This skill is absolutely invaluable and will save your life in so many situations. Find, buy and acquire as much quartz as you can and make sure you use it all. And again, don't worry if you're not happy with your placement. Going back to tip number three, eventually you do unlock the ability to respec your P organ. Tip number 11 is all about the different types of butterflies and what they mean. If you didn't know, their coloration has nothing to do with the type of loot they drop. It's actually all to do with their movements and how they interact when you attack them. The first butterflies you encounter and the most common are the red butterflies. They will always just flee in the opposite direction to wherever you're attacking them from, and you can use this to your advantage to move them away from enemies and trap them in corners. They will eventually vanish, and if they do, you've lost your chance and you'll need to rest at a stargazer and try again. However, these ones are fairly easy to take out. The next most common type of butterfly are the purple butterflies. At first, these seem to react exactly the same as the red butterflies, however, they disappear far, far quicker. And though it is possible to kill them before they disappear, unlike the red butterflies, don't worry if they do. All they have done is phased to a different area, and you need to hunt them down quickly before they're gone for good. Again, don't worry if you miss it, you can rest at a stargazer to respawn them. And a bonus tip here to help you out with the purple butterflies, they will always teleport away to the same place. So if you do manage to find the location that it's teleported to, but you don't get there quick enough, when you rest at the stargazer, you know exactly where you need to go now. And finally, the rarest and most powerful and annoying butterflies are the golden butterflies. The movements of these ones seem to be a bit more erratic, from what I can tell, they're cleverer, they will strafe, and they will deliberately get enemies involved in combat. Not only that, they disappear quite quickly, they have a lot of health, and they periodically explode, knocking you back. The only advice I can give for the Golden Butterflies is to use tools such as your Fable Arts, because they are very tough to take down, and they obviously offer the best rewards of all butterflies. The next tip is simply to never forget about backtracking. At many points in the game, you will open up new dialogue with previously encountered enemies, merchants may expand or replenish their inventories, and there may be side quests that take you back to earlier areas. This game can get very tough, and if you just keep pushing forwards, eventually you will probably hit a wall and you will be unable to progress further, because it just gets so challenging, especially if this is your first playthrough. So if you get stuck, make sure you explore a few side areas that you may not have fully combed through the first time. In fact, if you want to take this to the extreme, I strongly recommend it because it can really help to renew your confidence in your abilities. And what I mean by that is I literally teleported right back to the very first Stargazer in the game at one point, and I just went through the whole game again, killing every enemy, running through every single previously defeated boss arena, and just combing through everything to show myself exactly how much I've accomplished and how much I've achieved and the fact that I can do this, I can finish this game. It really gives you a sense of achievement and helps to renew your vigor for the trials ahead. Tip number 13 may sound very obvious, but I wanted to stress exactly what happens if you don't do this one simple thing, and that is using your grindstone to repair your weapon. 
Imagine right now I am right in the middle of a boss fight. They're on around 50% health and my weapon snaps in half like so. All of these enemies that you have just seen me one-shotting with ease are now very tough despite the fact they are literally the first enemies in the game. Imagine if this happened to you whilst you were in the middle of a boss fight. Your weapon now deals less than half damage and every single attack will bounce off the enemy and stun you. So make sure you are always keeping an eye on your weapon and repairing it whenever you need to. Keep it topped up just in case at all times. There is nothing worse than hearing that noise and seeing your weapon visibly snap in half at a crucial moment. Luckily it doesn't happen too often but keep it in mind because as you get to the later game areas and enemies start to deal a status effect called decay, this can rot your weapon's durability in a matter of seconds. And the final tip for this video is to use consumables and buffs. Did you know there is actually a very rare black market merchant who will sell you an infinite amount of most of the consumables and buffs in the whole game? I'll come on to exactly where you find him and how to access him in just a minute. But before that, as you're seeing a few examples play out in the background here, along with your fable, make sure you are buying and using your consumables and your buffs. They are so invaluable, especially if you are being clever and using the consumables that scale with your primary stat. For instance, for this character, as I am leveling technique, sharp pipes can deal upwards of 500 damage a hit. And not only that, most consumables deal crazy amounts of stagger damage to your enemies as well. So please make sure you are keeping your stocks replenished and don't waste them on smaller enemies. They are absolutely crucial for trivializing so many mini bosses. But the most important and juicy part of this tip I wanted to show you. When you get to the Malum district occupied by the Black Rabbit Brotherhood, Initially, you will only be able to go down this path and you'll see that the door to the Red Lobster Inn is currently closed. Eventually, once you've made your way through this area, you can open up this shortcut. Now, head inside this room and up the ladder and you will find the Black Market Merchant. There are two ways you can get access to this merchant's inventory. If you haven't yet beaten the Black Rabbit Brotherhood in this area, you can still speak to this merchant and bribe him to sell to you with a particularly rare and expensive bit of ergo such as a vivid or radiant. However, if you do defeat the Black Rabbit Brotherhood first, he will then sell to you without you needing to do this bribe first. And as you can see, he sells an infinite amount of so many very high quality consumables such as the sharp pipes I was just talking about or if you're going for a motivity build, the shot put is probably the best one for you to grab. There are so many incredible consumables here. Make sure you've always got a stock handy for when you next encounter a very powerful opponent. And my friends, that is it for my top 14 tips for the lies of P. I hope you've learned at least a few things in this video. If you have, please consider liking and subscribing. And as always, all that's left for me to say is thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.